That was weird, because I uh, could have sworn I hit dodge. But following that video game rule of when you fight a boss, you got to do things in threes, you know, like, like the old school Nintendo rules, like, oh, hit Donkey Kong three times or whatever. That's kind of what's happening here, is that every time one of these towers pop up, there we have to destroy them, and I think there's three in total. Oh, that was a that was a glitch or something that should have hit us. And each time we destroy one, all the enemies that sprout up around it uh, go bye bye with it. So I think the third one might be on this side. Yeah, I can see the star up on our GPS, so we'll head right for it. Yeah, I didn't want to really really want to fight those guys cuz we were going to be outnumbered and our health is already pretty low, so All right. Mission accomplished. Let's get inside here. The champion of light can feel the fragment of the signal in his pocket. The weapon that can change what will be. It's incomplete, but it's all he has. Uh, no, we're not going to play the arcade and, uh, and go into the Tron universe, although that would be cool. It was late at night. The summer was almost over. So, change the time. All right. It was late at night. The summer was almost over. So, there's going to be a lot of things we can interact with. It's optional. Um, I think there's some things to pick up, but... Uh, Druggative says, arcade, arcade, arcade! Alright, let's go to the arcade. <laughs> uh, this is called Death Rally. Which I feel like is a game? I, it might even be a remedy game. I can't remember. Someone will have to check me on that one. If you're not familiar with Remedy Studios, who made them? Uh, oh, here's Tom the Poet. And they have a, a picture of uh, Tom Zane here in his diver outfit, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's neat. Um, and I think we'll have to manipulate that in w the next time we come through here. So that's the other thing. There's more things to interact with in this room, but we don't do it yet. All right, so then the summer was almost over. There we go. Turn the fan on. No, that's not it. Uh, Drugative says, "Looks the game looks familiar. Yeah, it, it does look a little familiar. Um, I think it is. So Remedy Studios, they made Max Payne. That was like their first big game that I remember them doing. And Max Payne was, uh, was a huge hit for Remedy. And so they immediately went to work on the second one. So whereas the first Max Payne, they had, you know, a couple years to make it. They didn't have a lot of time to make the second one. I think they had like eight months or something or nine months or maybe even a little bit longer than that. But it was quick. It was really quick. All right. The summer was almost over. No, the fan... I know there's something else in here to interact with, and I'm sorry that I'm blanking on this. Um, it's just been a while since I've... I mean, I played this not too long ago, but I stopped before I got here. So that's why I, we replayed a new, um, a new, you know, and we started a new game tonight was because... Oh, there we go. Summer was almost over. Boom, August. Perfect. There we go. Now darkness is going to fill the room, and I think it activates a cutscene for us. Hell, this isn't going right. 
All right, so we'll check out this cutscene, which is the same one we saw at the beginning. So it just shows how many loops that Alan has probably gone through. So if you're a fan of PT, you might like this aspect of the story. Drugative says, ooh, Max Payne, another game I watched my brother play when I was young. I remember being spooked by a scene where a baby's crying and you're in a dark, weird puzzle place. Oh, yeah, dude. Max Payne was pretty cool. I, I really liked that game. And so what happened was um, after they made Max Payne 2, they, they had to make that game so quickly. It was, you know, obviously they really tapped themselves out. Um, it was a lot of hard work. So they wanted to create something new, a new franchise and go in a different direction. Um, Max Payne they liked because it was a kind of their nod to pulp, you know, a crime stories. And they wanted to make something now that was more thriller based that was kind of a nod to, you know, Stephen King and and uh, and stories that inspired them, you know, like on a horror level. And it was pretty cool that because that's what ended up leading to Max Payne. They announced it in 2005 and they showed some footage of it at uh at e3 in 2005 but then the game didn't actually come out to 2010 because it took them so many years to make the game and get funding for it and stuff like that that's why there's product placement in this like you know alan wake has a verizon phone and and energizer batteries and all that stuff so it took a long time to make these these games and which is why i'm so bummed that they didn't sell as well as they did because you know obviously that's why we don't have a sequel we got this, which is cool. So as you just saw, so we we activated the, the movie theater screen and the darkness seeped in and Alan realized he screwed something up. He didn't do something properly. He didn't find all the manuscript pages. He didn't learn all the rules to battle Mr. Scratch. And so what happened was he written in, in the, in the narrative, a loop. So whenever he fails, he could come, you know, he'll get sent and he gets, you know, destroyed or something. He would essentially be sent back to this part here you know uh at the edge of the cauldron cauldron lake which is all dried up and it's it's not even cauldron lake because we're technically in arizona now we're in the real world in arizona but yet there's diver's isle there from bright falls so it, it's still an amalgamation of real world and fantasy world um and two places in the real world that shouldn't be connected at all or have any similarities but if you remember when alan fought against the darkness he dove into cauldron lake and so you can imagine if he f found a way to break into the real world, some of those, you know, surrounding areas like the cabin and maybe like a boat or something like that, or, you know, something came with him um, and maybe the, the dock and the bridge. So that's what's going on. Little C, what up, dude? How's it going? Uh, so Druggative, this is Little C, Little C, Druggative. Uh, Druggative's new to our chat and channel. Uh, so give him a big welcome. If you guys want to follow each other, please do. Lil C does some streaming of his own. He was playing Last of Us recently. Before that was uh, Tomb Raider. And then this weekend, we're going to play co-op Resident Evil 5 together. Uh, by, by the way, Lil C, I, I will add you on um, Xbox Live. Um, I have uh, I have gold now, and I will I activated it before I turn this on. So I will be, um, you know, uh, now that I have that activated, I will look you up on uh on xbox and i'll add you and we can play saturday or sunday whatever whichever day you want to play you just let me know when you're free and what times um i think i have to do something saturday morning but hopefully by like you know lunchtime or early afternoon i should be home but if you want to play during the day or at or at, at night you just let me know So those things suck, whatever they are. They're new enemies, too. They just hop at you. Um, Lil C says, sup. And then Druggative says, hey, hey. Sure, I'll throw you a follow. Yeah, man. We got a lot of cool people that you know usually show up in our chats. Um, it's just been, you know, it, it's it, it's slow. Because I think, like I said, Alan Wake's not really everyone's cup of tea. Plus, obviously, you know, everyone has their own streams. Everyone's got their own lives. So I don't expect people to be here all the time. But usually when we have a full house in here, it's really fun. We talk about a lot of fun stuff. So uh, hopefully you get to catch other streams of ours, Druggative, after this one. I think this might be my last stream for the week before we, you know, before uh, we play Resident Evil 5 this weekend. 
uh, with little C. So I might take the next two days off be- and some work done. I'm writing my next book right now and I got some other, you know, uh, just life stuff I got to deal with. So I'll probably take the next few nights off. But on Saturday and Sunday, we'll, you know, Lil C and I will probably be playing Resident Evil 5. And then uh, next week, I have uh, Lil C, you might like this. I have, uh, I actually have Devil May Cry, the remake. So, um, you know, I can play either that or Resident Evil Revelations 2. Um, so we'll talk about that, you know, when we get there. Yeah, so. These are these new enemies where the crows now, instead of being like birds that like come at you and uh, you know, like they, they like they did in the main game where it was like Alfred Hitchcock's the birds. These birds are different. They form into um, you know creatures like a like a kind of hopping zombie like dudes, which is pretty cool. Uh, without too much spoilers, do you get out of the darkness? Uh, I I would say technically we're out now technically if that makes any sense I, and without spoiling too much i would say uh, yeah okay you, you, so drugative says in fact don't tell me <laughs> so yeah i i won't i won't go into it but kind of technically right now we kind of are but we're kind of not and and that'll make more sense later so i won't spoil that for you um Lil C asks, Seek, do you want Emma? Rise of Tomb Raider? You're Just here. got on PS4 and don't really have use for it. You don't have use for, um, what, the Xbox One version anymore? Wow, it is you. I, I guess all of it really happened. You remember me? Kind of. I felt weird all, right, so all day, like I could almost remember a dream I had. This was the then, first level we played when we first started the game. I the so this is Emma. She's a, a mechanic, and we thought she was just, a you know, a badly written character in a TV show, so we've been playing along as her being that. But now after that revelation that Alice is showing up at that drive through showing a film that stars us, we're kind of like, we're kind of, you be careful. In a, now we're not really understanding yeah, what's happening, you know? Something. So now we're, Alan's Seems starting to treat to Emma and these other people he's meeting yeah, as really actual happen. people. Okay, and if, if they get, if they okay. die or anything, you know, he, he now feels res- even more responsible because before he just thought they were fictional characters that were dying. Now he's like, no, this is, this is really happening. And, and these poor people are stuck in this time loop with me. And they're dying over and over and over because of my mistakes. So now there there are stakes that involved more than just me, and there are other people involved. So I need to you know get my shit together basically. Lil C says exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, message me. I'll, I'll if you're if you're just gonna toss it out, man. I'll uh yeah I'll I'll take I'll take a copy of Tomb Raider. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Because on my personal weird shitometer, this just doesn't. Uh, message me and I'll uh, uh, later um, either tomorrow or something. I'll I'll message you back with my address. Just keep cool. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Okay. So. So Alan, now I said like the stakes have been risen. You know, they 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 rose now because because now we're realizing innocent people are involved. So the cool thing is that now that we're back through this area, she has already gone through. Whoa, whoops. <laughs> She's already gone through and grabbed the things we needed because she still remembers the last time we came here. She, the loop, like I said, kind of like PT, like when you played PT, um, the loops really are, they happen, but the people aren't forgetting, you know, what they did uh, before the loop uh you know, reset. So she remembers dying and being picked apart, which is scary and tragic. But she also remembers what she did for us. So she went out and grabbed a couple of these items. So we only have to go pick up the battery now instead of finding like three things. I know. They all say that, right? Yeah, so this is creepy. And that's kind of a throwback to Rose from the main game, who she also claimed to be our biggest fan as well. Um, Lil C asks, would you rather, uh, give it to a friend who hasn't played it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you have a friend who hasn't played it, 
by all means, do that first. And, you know, and if they want to get rid of it one day, you can send it to me then. Because um, I actually been enjoying your streams of it. So, like, and, and when I enjoy a stream that much, I don't really have to play the game. I like sometimes experiencing a game through someone else's, you know, passion and enthusiasm for it. Um, so that's fine. If you have another friend that uh, that hasn't played it yet that you want to give it to, by all means, man, I'm cool with just watching your stream on it. I think that's fine. Um, but if you sent it to me, like, I, I, I will play it myself. Like, I, you know, I think it was a cool looking game. But, uh, but no, go with your friend. If you have a friend that wants it, go with them first. Uh, and then there we go. Another snuff film there. So Mr. Scratch just killing more people again. And now we, now we know that that is, le you know, most likely a legit person. Cause we seem to be stuck between, you know, the real world and, and, uh, various fictitious worlds. So it's, it's a little, you know, ambiguous kind of, you know, the, the, the key word to describe the Alan Wake universe is that uh, they commit to the rules of the universe, but they don't really always commit to the answers. Sometimes they let they leave it up to, you know, the player to decipher. But yeah, this sucks. We're now we're in a mine shaft, uh, pitch black. Do we get it? I hate those little now guys. I just need her to charge this up. Wait, what? Weird. That was weird. It wouldn't let me... Maybe there was a, a bug there or something. It wouldn't let me uh, escape. <laughs> yeah, and if you if you explore the mine a little bit, you will find other... I think, like, manuscript pages or, or stuff. Um, you will find other things in there. So they, they, again, like the main game, it rewards you for exploring the, uh, the darkness. Oh, look at, oh my god, there is a lot of these mother effers. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Lil C. Lil C says, no, I said I would rather give it to a, I said I would rather give it to a friend, which is you, Seek, because you haven't played. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I misunderstood that. Then yeah, man. Message. That's very nice of you. Message. I'm so sorry, man. I'm. It's late, and I'm. Um. My head's not on straight. I've had a long day today. Uh. Yeah. Message me, and and I'll. Uh, I'll give you my address, man. I appreciate that very much. That's really cool of you, dude. I will happily play it. All right. So now let's uh, let's bring this battery back to Emma. And uh, and let's get her to charge it up. Found the battery. Okay, I'll charge it. <laughs> Here, try not to get killed. No promises. All right, so we're going to cut down some of the chit chat on these second playthroughs and just kind of get to the point because um, I always like to keep my streams, you know, between like, you know, three to, th you know, three around three hours and we're already past the two hour point. I think we're right at the two hour point. So, um, so I just want to keep, uh, you know, I, I just want to make sure we get through this pretty quickly so that way it's, uh, it doesn't take too long to download so I can, you know, edit it down to, uh, one hour increments. And throw it up on my YouTube page later on. So I have a feeling this is going to be a probably a three-hour video. Oh dang! I got bang that sucker butt. You know what? F you, dude. Sweet. All right, so the wheel was in place. The oil was flowing. We got to do, do all this crap. But thank you, Lil C. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, and and when you message me, uh, I'll send you my address, and then let me know. Uh, 
Up, oh, accidental jump. Drinking game. <laughs> you guys aren't going to get too drunk tonight. I'm, I'm getting better at those accidental jumps. So don't worry. Don't. <laughs> you'll just take one or two shots tonight, probably. All right, now let's play our song. This is Kasabian. Uh, the song is called Club Foot. And I think it came out on their debut album, which came out in 2004. And they're a British pop, uh, punk band. I love the music in these games. I, I raved about them in the other, um, you know, the other streams. Yeah, I dig this. Pretty neat. Yeah, and then and then uh, we'll see when you, when I send you my address. We'll talk about. Uh, we'll set up a time on on Saturday or Sunday or or both days, whichever you want to do, and we'll play if you want. I have a save game. Um, that we can play. It, we can start at the beginning, obviously, but it has uh, it has pretty much all the um, unlimited ammo and everything, so it'll make our playthrough just a little bit faster, a little bit more fun. Uh, it'll keep things light, um, which is, uh, you know, I think it'll just be more fun because then you and I can, like, banter and, and have fun and not worry too much about, uh, you know, the difficulty level. Um, whoa. Oof. That was a glitch. I think that should have hit me right in the eye. Um, Drugative says, reminds me of Skate or... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ow. Oh, dang. Oh shoot, these things multiply. Damn. These guys remind me of the uh, the vampires in Blade 2 a little bit. I mean, their mouths don't open like that, but they're just like all skinny and they're weird looking. Uh, reminds me of Skate or Tony Hawk. I can't remember. The song hey, does. Oh, yeah. It definitely has that feel to it, right? <laughs> definitely. Um, Lil C says, no problem. I don't need Tomb Raider. Gotcha, man. So you got it on PS4, huh? Is PS4 easier for you to stream? I, I hear a lot of people say that. And I know PS4 has the video. I don't have the Xbox uh, Connect. I, I, it's something I want to invest in. Because some people are like, hey, I'd like to see your face reactions. Because I do some, sometimes I do reaction videos on my YouTube channel. And people seem to like my goofy faces that I make when I get scared or or jump or whatever. So I might I might invest for that for Christmas. I think you can get a connect for like 50 bucks now. They were like really cheap. Lil C says, it won't apply to me because I don't have unlimited ammo. And I like to play on hard difficulty. More of a challenge. Oh, snap. Okay. Hmm. And there was this girl All right, we'll we'll, f we'll find a died. we'll find a compromise. If the um so if the unlimited was ammo was won't affect dark. you, that's, that's right. then I might be down to play it on a harder difficulty. I don't know what happened. As long as I get the as long as I get to have my unlimited <laughs> ammo, because uh, because trust me, if I I'm serious. If I die more than like twice or three times, yeah, okay. I'm like a really unpleasant uh, gamer after that. <laughs> so I'm just trying to avoid that on my streams. Like I try to keep things like, that's why I play a lot of these on, on easy modes. Cause I'm more here for the story than anything. And same with five, like Resident Evil five, like when we're playing it, I'll probably talk a lot about the storyline. Um, but I'm down to play. If you don't mind me using unlimited ammo, I'm down to play a harder difficulty. If you're okay with me using unlimited ammo. So just, uh, just let me know. Yep, and once again, Emma is dead, unfortunately. All right, so now we know what room to go in, so we'll just go right into it. She already got the key from the diner, so she helped us out a lot. And now we're going to just go right to the observatory. I'm not even going to explore the room. 
We gotta speed this along. I said that nobody knows what the future might bring, but for this man, it's no longer entirely true. A weaker man might simply give up. So I wish we kind of got a little bit of emotion out of Alan there, like him screaming like, no, Emma. Because I feel like they set up that he kind of understands now that she's could be a real person. And so he's, I feel like a little bit of emotion would have, should have come out of him there as opposed to just like us going, uh, oh, and then turning around and going into that room and <laughs> stuff. Um, uh, cool. Lil C says, yes. And I, I, I yes, I can't stream without lag on Xbox. Gotcha. Into the endless um, depths of space. So you, Tonight, well, hmm. The champion of light will depend on them to pick out a message from the ether. So, uh, how are we going to do this then, Lil C? Um, like, do you want to just stream? Because I only have an Xbox, so I can only, you know, uh, and I know we plan on playing. I mean, I know we're going to be, I'll yeah, add you as an Xbox friend. So I know we're going to play on Xbox, but are you cool with, uh, are you cool with trying it just to see if uh, on, on you know to see if we don't get a lot of lag? I'll keep my fingers crossed for us. Uh, but I did hear that though. I heard I heard people say who have both systems say that the Xbox they seem to get more lag sometimes on uh, on Twitch than on than with a PS4. Um, so that's a bummer, man. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Whoa, what up? Jesus. Oh, he's got the grenades. Alright, so this time we're going up this way because we know what to get. So we're going to go get that uh, that thing out of that lady's car. Oh, okay. We're going to have to stand and fight probably. Whew. Uh, well, what's our car doing over here? Oh, that's right. Because we got to the observatory faster, um, some things are going to be different. Because we, you know, let, let's say, like, let's say it took us two hours to get there in the game storyline the first time. Well, now we got there, we got here in an hour, you know, so we're, we're going to get to each environment faster. Um, you have the ultimate zombie killing machine. We good on vet mode. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. I, I appreciate that. I like the confidence, too. Um. All right, well, if I got you by my side, then sweet. We'll play vet mode. And uh, as long as you don't mind me um, playing uh, playing with the unlimited ammo, then, then uh, I'm down for sure. Whoa. Oh, yeah, the enemies are unlimited here. I forgot. For the most part. Let's go heal. Get in that light. Get in that light, Alan. Yes. Got him. Uh, Lil C says, no, just me streaming lags. But if I'm just playing online with you, it's no lag. All right, cool, man. Sweet. Well, then we are going to have some fun on Saturday, dude. And I like that, man. So do you have a, do you have a preference? Um of character because I, I I'll be honest I'm kind of a Sheva fan I love Chris Redfield but you know he's he's playable in so many other games uh, of the Resident Evil franchise I like playing a Sheva because it's like her only Resident Evil game so I, I don't know if you have a preference but um, uh, I don't mind playing a Sheva I know what you're thinking evil twin supernatural powers but most of the time I just like to keep things basic. So this is kind of, like I said before, this is keeping in in tone with the main game. In the main game, every time Alan turned on the TV set, it was real. It was live action actors on TV. And they're continuing that in this one, which is cool. But I like that the cutscenes are also live action. I think they did a really good job on the cutscene. Because it's essentially the same cutscene you see just like three times. You know, him and surrounded by the darkness. And Mr. Scratch taunting him. Twists, you might end 
stop cutting yourself. It's not really a work. Hey, Drugative, thanks for the follow on Twitch, man. Uh, I will definitely, I just got a notice, an uh, email notice. So I will definitely, uh, uh, like I will definitely follow you back when, I, when I'm online next. Uh, probably tomorrow. Believe me, you really want that traction once you're wrist deep in somebody. Um, Lil C says, I, it's true. I beat RE5 over 70 times and unlimited ammo is fine. And you're a Sheva fan also never played with Chris. Also, awesome. Well, you know what, dude, if you're, if you're a Sheva fan too, then you, you play as Sheva. I'll play as Chris. If you don't want to play as Chris, no problem with me. Um, no problem at all. Yeah. So you have Mr. Scratch here talking about how he's going to kill people with wearing our face. So that's awesome. We also found out that we've been missing for two years and that Alice apparently has made a film about us. Um, and then Dr. Meadows here, she's having trouble understanding what's going on. Like the deja vu, like Emma, Emma, you know, being a mechanic and she's kind of like more like down to earth kind of person and, uh, and believes the things that ha are in front of her. And she probably even like, you know, believes in the supernatural to an extent she's seen the creatures the monsters she's wrapped her head around this a little bit more um so the idea of a time loop doesn't surprise her too much this doctor though is more fascinated by it so she is curious about it naturally opposed to it not that it may not be happening so she's don't start it up yet yeah cooling system yes that's right i remember all right, let me think. If they're sabotaging it, they'll be at the primary coolant by that side. If you can secure it, we should be ready to pick up the signal. That is why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll take care of it. Before you go, if you have the time, I'd appreciate if you came up here and explained a few things. All of this is very strange to me. All right, we'll just go up and say something. Well, you know what? No, we're not going to explain shit to her. Um, we're just going to go do this. Like I said, we're we're past the two hour point, so I want to make sure we get through this. So now we just gotta hang. We just gotta go. Uh, the primary pipe is down here. Oh yeah, let's not fall to our deaths. Seek. Try not to do that again. Um, Drugative says, "My pleasure." Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. I will definitely give you a follow back, my friend. I'm glad you found our stream tonight, man. It was really nice having you on here. Uh, Lil C says, I, s I see the... You have a new Rogue One poster. Can't wait to see it. Uh, oh, you see, you see they have a... They. You see that they have a note. Uh, yeah, that's right. They just released it today, right? I haven't checked it out yet. Is it... Um, is it cool? I imagine it is. If you're uh, mentioning it. I'm, I'm like really behind on a lot of uh, stuff. Oof. Crowbar to the head, that would have sucked. Yeah, I'm I'm a little excited for Rogue One. I'll be honest. It's it's uh I mean I like I like Star Wars. Um but I, I was a little worried about Rogue One at first. Just uh you know, just all the stuff. Um you know, we're we're, we're branching out into a, a, a you know, a side story essentially. It's like almost like our first extended universe storyline in live action form in a way and i kind of like that and i'm a little scared by that you know so if you're wondering why the game's all choppy and stuff right now it's uh probably because the amount of enemies Sometimes that happens in, in American Nightmares is a ton of enemies will be on screen at once and and there's like, a, I don't know, there's a weird reaction to it uh, where, where it causes uh, everything to slow down. But yeah, the Darkness and Mr. Scratch, they're getting pissed off now. They're, uh, they're not effing around anymore. I guess they didn't like that. Um... Hey, what up, Tony Young? How are you, sir? Thanks for joining us tonight. And yeah, the game did get a little bit laggy there. Like I said, it's just... It's main, it's mainly because of the amount of enemies on screen at once. 
I don't know why it happens. It just, um, cause normally the game should be able to handle that, but it is, uh, it's just something that it happens on, uh, oh, from time to time on this. Ah, oh, come on. So close to healing. But Tony, thanks for joining us again tonight. Hope you're doing well. This is the final chapter of the Alan Wake saga that has at least been released so far. Um, this is called American Nightmare, and it's very action-oriented, this one. A lot, uh, a lot different than the the other one we played. It's very fast-paced, you know, a lot of monsters, and it's because this new villain that arose, this Mr. Scratch guy, he's kind of a part of us, and he knows what the darkness did wrong the first time um, in trying to, you know, expand and 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 take over and spread, and uh, and so it knows, it knows how we beat it the first time, and it's doing everything it can to avoid that. Um, and it's always and it's trying to stay a step ahead of us. That was the problem with the last darkness is that it lured us to it. Mr. Scratch kind of wants us to stay away. Um, so he's a very different adversary than than the version that took the shape of Barbara Jagger in the original game. Yes, I don't think it's quite the same thing we had um, the last time. Still, we're definitely picking it up. Are we getting the complete signal now? I'm afraid not. Take a look at it yourself. I'm printing out So once again, we're now. still not getting I'd the full like to ask signal. You a question or two before that though. If you don't mind. Which is a bit frustrating for Alan. It's on your mind, doctor. I'm sure. Most people would find these events extremely disturbing, provided that they survive these creatures, that is. You seem to be quite adept at dealing with the situation. Why is that? Yes. I was involved in it's a complex story. I was in this small town, <laughs> and a horror I'll say. from another dimension kidnapped my wife and manipulated me into writing this horror story that came true. I learned to fight it with light, and I managed to contain it and free my wife, but I was trapped in its world. Are you serious? Absolutely. Yeah, so, I'm serious. I think I made that up. I'm in strange or even impossible ways, and I fought these things, not exactly like this, <laughs> but scientists, am I right? While now. Of course, I have certain advantages. Was there anything else? What did you mean when you said you have advantages? At the risk of sounding like a lunatic, reality is much more fluid than people think. It can be influenced. I didn't take you for a mystic. I'm not. I'm a writer. And under certain <laughs> conditions, I can, for lack of a better word, rewrite reality. Change things. That's absurd. But it works. Assuming I believe this, why don't you simply... I don't know, write yourself some superpowers. It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. There are things out there that will take advantage of your mistakes. You really believe in this? Yeah, we don't believe in it, lady. It's Another happening. Printout. Another signal fragment. <laughs> The message is still not complete, but it's another piece of the weapon. So as you saw, we flew through the motel area, and we definitely flew through that area. And that's how it's going to be. So we're going to go through the drive-in one more time, and then it'll loop us back to the beginning of the game for one last go-through. So, you know, it's not this. It's not very diverse in its locations in this uh, in this game. But uh, there are different things that kind of happen each time, slightly different interactions, uh, because, you know, the people the know that they're stuck the in a time loop. Came to the drive -in. It did not end well. He hopes to avoid that fate this time. He hopes that what he has brought with him to this place is enough. All right, so we're going to get the generator building key and... Serena's probably out of her mind again, but I'm gonna need that key so I can get the power back on. You again? I'm really just here to get the key so I can get the power back on. Yeah, and this is Serena. She runs, she runs this. Uh, there's like a, like a yeah, kind of like an exhibit going on right now of like different films, like indie films. Little wifey, waiting. And she knows who we are. You know, the other Emma and this uh, and the observatory lady. 
they never heard of us, you know, as, as far as Alan Wake, the writer. She, this girl, knows who we are. And she told us in the end of the last chapter that our wife apparently made a movie about us and that we've been dead for two years. So she's kind of, you know, like, wow, how are you here? Kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. All right, can we turn the lights on and, and like, help her? No? Okay. Let's just get that key and... Oh, let's check out the radio. So, again, the radio is kind of our window into what's happening in the main world. And we had earlier the uh, radio personality was was talking to the old gods of Asgard. But see, since we're here early, his guests haven't showed up yet. You know, we're that's so that's one of the things about you know, I think he mentions in that radio stream like hey uh my you know up next after the commercial break is the old gods of asgard so because we keep getting to these places faster and faster again, oh. um you know that the the events are happening slightly differently If you ask me um, where I learned to shoot, uh, I never did. So don't worry about it. <laughs> That's why it's so bad. You gotta love when the darkness just throws cars at you. Oh, we got the Birdmen. Okay, that sucked. Oh, come on. I forgot the lights here, they die after you uh, use them. Come on, Cletus. All right. Let's see what Mr. Scratch is up to. Oh, that's not creepy at all. He's, uh, talk about Alice. like kissing a picture of my wife. She's really beautiful, isn't she? I can't wait to shoot that guy in the face. All right, so now we got to go all the way back here and restore this stupid power again. I think our third time through here, we don't have to come out this way, if I'm not mistaken. I think the third time... You know, I don't, I can't remember how it goes. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Making good time, even though I'm out of breath. <laughs> and I can't remember if the circuit breaker changes each time you play. We're gonna, we're gonna try to do what we did last time, which is uh, just pull like I think it's the first one and the third one, um, and hopefully that'll that works the same. I think all the puzzle solutions are the same. I don't know why they would be different, but... Okay, or not.
So uh, the solution was right in front of my face, uh, and I feel like an idiot for being so late on it. Um, when the thing was flashing eh, 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 up here, that middle green one, see it blinking? That's the that was the solution. Yeah, I'm a moron. I hate those things. Oh, I was that that caught me completely off guard. Good thing they missed. We made it. Sweet. So we're going through this pretty quickly. Our life's a lot quicker than we did the last time. If you die, you lose. Mr. If you Mr. Quit, Scratch you is getting lose. pissed, though. Make it to the end of the loop, you still lose. <laughs> Sucker. Oh, come on. So I dodged one, but not the other one, huh? Sucked. <laughs> and so the projector's playing again now that we got the power back on, and we're seeing some of the earlier films that Mr. Scratch made where he taunted us. He's a pretty good bad guy. I mean, like he's he's the only because he's different than Barbara Jagger. Barbara Jagger was more like or at least the you know I say Barbara Jagger, we know she wasn't the real villain. The darkness just took her form because it messed with Thomas Aine and it messed with, you know, everyone else um, uh, in the storyline. But she was more of behind the scenes kind of manipulative kind of, you know, villain. And, uh, and Alan's, or Mr. Scratch, I should say, is, is the opposite. He's more in your face, more direct. So it's just nice that they kind of change that up, you know. I bet you when they were designing this game, and everything they were, they were thinking about that, you know, have, making it different. Oh, you're dead. So you have to activate them in a different order this time. I think it's uh, that side, this side, and yep. Where is that third one? Does that star say it's behind this thing? Oh man, I totally forgot that there's more area back here. Yeah, look at this. Bam! Shazam! Alright, let's get the hell out of here. I forgot there's like, yeah, like, look, there's like a little hut back there and everything. I think that's where you find like manuscript pages and these world, these environments are pretty open. Like, I know it looks like we're going, you know, like, oh, this game looks very short for like a five or $10 game. It's 
you know, because it's like, oh, it's just the same three areas over and over. But th there is a lot of stuff to explore for the sure. Champion of Light knows that the time itself. Oh, we're coming up to Drogative's favorite part. We get the arcade machine. At least for him, <laughs> he can feel the dead end rushing towards him. But there is time to act, incomplete or not. All right, so we got more of the signal. So it was late at night. But maybe it's so enough. It's not enough, Alan. Alright, so we got that. We gotta change this to end of summer. Wait. Summer, yep. Uh, <laughs> Drogative says, whoop whoop! There was a film noir poster visible. Oh yeah, so... This is not a, a film noir poster. But this is... The Gift of Thorns. This is an Alex Casey, uh, one of, one of Alan Wake's, uh, Alan Casey stuff. Looks like they made a film of it. Maybe while he was, uh, gone for two years. All right, so what else? There was a, a spotlight illuminated the red fire extinguisher. Oh, let's turn on the arcade first so that, uh... <laughs> that little uh, music it plays there, though, is from the, the original Alan Wake game, which is nice. Oh, yeah, here we go. Turn lamp. Boom. Uh, turn lamp again. Yay! So
fuse box, which I think is back here. <laughs> Come on, Alan. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go check out what's on the TV. It's probably another victim, so but here's. About Barry. I don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not gonna keep him around. That's for sure. Al. Yeah. Al. Ugh, little parasite. Your best friend. Really? That's the best you can do. So uh, Mr. Scratch is realizing, obviously, that we're, we're stuck in this loop. It's pissing him off. Every time he tries to kill us, which he wants to do, it just resets the loop. And, uh, and so he's kind of at a, at a boiling point here. So now he's, he's trying to think of trying to get under his skin, get us to maybe react differently or, or, or screw up in some way by, by, you know, pissing us off maybe. Um, okay. So he's really telling us about the things he's going to do in the real world, in Please. our skin, you know, um, and he's saying, you, you know, starting off saying he's going to mess with Barry hey. and hurt hey. our best friend. At the diner, then he's obviously he'll build up to threatening me. Alice. Okay, I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. Want to talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory and he just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I, I didn't know that he was going to do that, I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. Hmm. So the breaker's on, so she's safe. Now we can go in here, check on this. And we can actually leave with her still alive. So already we've we've done better, you know. <laughs> we we didn't we couldn't the loop, unfortunately, always resets after the observatory guy's already dead. So he's he we can't save him, but Emma we could. For this moment, it is enough. So now we need to get to. The observatory and make sure this. that uh, Dr. Meadows is safe, even though she never really died in the other in the other outcomes because she stayed in that tower that was full of light. So as far as we know, she was OK, but uh, we still got to make sure she's all right and make sure she's secured in there and then head to the drive in. And the hopefully we get the full the signal this time. time. The man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. And we need that cosmic signal to tell us everything to do in the uh, projector room so we know exactly where everything needs to be. Because, again, Alan already wrote this story. He already kind of wrote how to defeat Mr. Scratch because he was prepared, you know, like, unlike he was, you know, unlike, um, oh, what up? All right. So, cool. We got... We got a goal. Um, Thanks for tuning in for the second part of our interview with Serena Valdivia and award-winning photographer. Alan and so again, now, Alice, we were talking about your husband, Alan Wake. Uh, is that a sore subject? That we oh, we okay. got here even sooner. Like I said, if it took us two hours to get here the first time, and then an hour last time, we got here in like 20 minutes this time. So we're catching earlier radio broadcasts, and this is one of Alice on the radio talking about being in town for her short film about her husband who disappeared two years ago. So we're still getting glimpses into the real world. And we see that Alice has not stopped loving us and has not given up on us. So very, very awesome. Uh, we, we, we married well. Uh oh,
Oh, these guys, what? They're gonna climb. How do I get in there? Oh, that's good. The big ugly guy. He helped. Stay away, boys. Bam! Right there, doctor. All right. So all this is going to still happen. It's still going to get pissed off and throw cars at us. But at least all that side crap is done. The array is lined up. So all we have to do is just make it to the observatory in one piece. Not going to be easy. I'll be honest. And that was a weird uh, glitch. You guys see that? I was just walking on thin air. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, oh, right. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> we are dead. We are going to die. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. I was like, because I was already out of breath. I could tell Alan wasn't running fast. And uh, and that big guy was, he just, his his reach is unbelievable. Uh, Drugative, were you laughing at me running on the in the air? That was, uh, that was pretty awesome. Uh, Drugative says RIP. <laughs> yeah. I should have just gone this way to begin with. That's, uh... It's on me. Alan, throw the damn grenade. This is called Run, Alan, Run. Oh, shit. Yeah, these guys do not want me to... Yeah! Oh, we gotta check the TV. Psycho Bob here. The combat in this game is really satisfying, satisfying for some reason, Drugative says. Yeah, so the combat in this one, like I said, it, it's different than the the main game. I mean, it's the same mechanics, essentially. It's just much faster. Um, and again, like I said, it's because Alan starts off in the franchise as just a writer. He's not an action star. He's never held a gun before. And uh, in this game, you wouldn't even know it. But it's because after going through the events of the first game and writing himself as a... Like, he had a main character who was good at guns and could fight back and changed the main character's name to Alan Wake and wrote himself into the story, he kind of got those abilities and honed them throughout the game and through the DLCs. So now he's like, he has that those abilities kind of nurtured. And uh, and he's using them to, to take the fight to this new breed of darkness uh, that he feels responsible for making. Gotta love the music.
Oh, that's weird. Oh, crap. Uh, Juggernaut says, interesting song choices. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is, so this is, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is, uh, I don't want to say it's the Old Gods of Asgard. So there's a fictional band in this universe called the Old Gods of Asgard, but they're actually, um, the actual band in real life, I believe, is Poets of the Fall, and, uh, and the, I think Sam Lake and all those guys are just big fans of theirs. So they got them to essentially do like some of the songs in the first soundtrack. And then they came back on in this soundtrack and they, they do the vocals for both, um, you know, obviously Poets of the Fall, but also Old Gods of Asgard. And so I think, I can't remember if that was the Old Gods of Asgard song or the Poets of the Fall song. I, th I want to say it was the Old Gods of Asgard song, but they, so they wrote, you know, two new songs for this American Nightmares game, I think. And one of them they wrote under the, you know, the, the fake name of Old Gods of Asgard. You know, I know physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horror... All right, so we're, we're, we're pretty on schedule. Like I said, I like to keep my streams to around three hours, and in about, I think we started at 9.30 tonight, so, you know, about in the next 20 minutes, um, we should have this game beat. Uh, so let's see what she has to say. This should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again. No more bad guys. Things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd like yeah, so it's the interesting that to look into this in more detail. The loops like have the different effects on, on different people. If this is a um, delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Wade, <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not... But she's starting to come around, which I, which I like, because she feels very flat at the beginning. Um, is everybody but, in the world but she, you know, in this, in this last loop, right she, you know, comes across more of a, a person. But she's still, as a scientist, still, fan, you know, a completely fascinated. He feels at ease. He is armed with his own words. And when the time All right. Comes, so again, this signal, this weird not. cosmic signal that, that her He's her equipment picked up is essentially a manuscript page. It's it's the last page of the story, the thing Alan hidden, hid really well because he essentially found a way to trap Mr. Scratch here in this in, in these environments. Um, and like I said, the loops keep happening every time Alan fails. He wrote that into the story so that it would keep giving him new opportunities to fight back. So Alan isn't stupid. You know, he, he he's not going to be caught off guard like he was the first time the darkness showed up. Now he's, he's trying to use that knowledge to fight back. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more. But cowardice is not among them. So, as you see, we're in a different area. There's the, the theater over there. We're starting off in a different area than we normally did. Um, we're, we're, we're pulling up right next to the power that needs to be turned on. But Mr. Scratch, uh, he's not playing that shit. Come on, wake, load the effing gun. So yeah, this time Alan drove around the back and 
and decided to just plant himself right at the, uh, you know, right at the entrance to the power. So we can just turn that on, run into, uh, you know, and get the key and talk to uh, Serena and then hopefully get the hell out of here. Oh, I have no crap. All right, which one is see? Okay. Come on, man, I can't move. Oh, that you suck. You suck, game. <laughs> Angel says, hey, what up, Angel? Welcome back. We are, uh, we are still fighting darkness members. Where'd that other guy go? So I was wondering, like, why I couldn't cut through here. I forgot because later on, I mean, this place gets messed up. Um, but since we got here so early this time around, it's, you know, most of this stuff is still standing. Oh, come on, guys. Get them all? Most of them. Oh, shoot. They, that's right. They just keep... They're just going to keep coming. Oops. Oh, God dang it. Yeah, so the enemies at this point are just endless, I believe. They just keep respawning and respawning and respawning. Um, and that's what I wanted. I knew... It was, I was like, where is it? I thought it was in here. That's uh, you know, our, our ammo cache. Just get unlimited ammo. Oh, wait, I need to... Dang it. I need to turn this on. Whew. Angel and uh, Urzatron meet Drugative. Drugative meet uh, Angel and Urzatron. If if Urz Urzatron may have already gone, but uh, if he's still here, um, Drugative is new to our channel. He randomly found us, and uh, he's a a, fr a new friend from England. And actually, uh, Drugative Angel she streams um, as well as well as Little C does, and she streams like Resident Evil and just like a whole bunch of cool games. So yeah, definitely. Uh, oh Jesus. Okay. Oh, come on. Oh, thank goodness. Woo! Dang it, man. Whew. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What up? Um, oh, Drugative says, you, oh, you found me through Angel's hosting. Awesome. That's awesome. So you know Angel already? Angel's pretty awesome. Um, Urzatron says, yeah, I probably left. Don't worry. I'll take care of your wife and your life. All right, so now this guy's really pissing us off. He's pressing our buttons. He's already threatened to come after Barry. But to, uh, so this song, I think, is the maybe the poet's uh, song. Oh, 
Oh, you sneaky son of a bitch. All right. I only got one bullet left in the shotgun. Uh, oh, but Drugger says, well, but I don't remember following Angel. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, definitely, if you get a chance, if you're looking for cool streamers, check out her stuff, too. She's awesome. Her and uh, Lil C. Urzatron doesn't stream too much, but he speedruns, if I'm not mistaken. Um, whoa, Jesus. All right. So we, we definitely piss this guy off. But you know what? He talked about my wife, so... Jesus. The enemies, right? Um, Urzatron said he was doing some reading about Kepler uh, 452B. Uh, just some light reading about Kepler. For, that's cool, man. What is, is there like a new um, like online reading? Or, uh, or like, do you have a, is there like a new book out or anything about it? New study? All right, so we have another TV here. And then one of the achievements in the, in this game and in the main game, I think, is is watching all the TV things, uh, picking up all the manuscript pages. That's that's definitely a, an achievement. We're nearing the end here. Um, See, I don't even think uh, Serena's here yet because Serena, if you remember when we came here the second time, or not the second time, the we went to the observatory the second time, she was um, she was being interviewed at the radio station, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so she she may not even be here yet, which is why we don't go up to the uh, you know to the main tower. Whoa, what up? Alright, so we gotta destroy all four this time. Boom! Yeah, it's not even worth uh, fighting these enemies in this one. Uh, in this because it's so hard now. But all right, so we did it. We, we were able to clear that room out. And uh, since we already know the code, we also didn't need to go. Oh, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my, my controller died. So hopefully you're still hearing me. I apologize for that. <laughs> Everything was going so well. Um, Druggerton says, maybe you can help me with my girlfriend's astronomy college work. <laughs> Isn't Kepler Earth-like planet? Interesting stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, Urza, okay, Urza Chan's already on it. Well, Kepler uh, 452b is. Kepler is the name of the probe that is being used to identify other planets. That's right. Nice. Again, the champion That's of very cool. Enters the final trap. All right. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the It's discovered 2330 confirmed planets so far. Holy balls. Has it really? Snap into place. That the Kepler Kepler 452b has? Holy, that's awesome. Uh, all right. So we got the final piece of the puzzle. It was late at night. So let's go set the clock. Um, Drugative says, yeah, apologies, I couldn't be bothered to write the numbers digits, LL. No, no problem, dude. No judgments here. All right, so then we have to move it to the end of summer. So that's one of the other details that the, the book has about, um, because we have to get all the details right, otherwise we can't complete the story. And Mr. Scratch knew that, and he tried to hide it from us. He tried to destroy, uh, the equipment at the observatory, uh, once he learned, you know, about its existence. Um, a spotlight illuminated the red fire. All right, so let's go back here. Kepler 452b is 1.6 times the size of Earth and 1.5 billion years old. Holy shit. That's awesome. All right, what's the last one? Alice's film was in the projector. Oh. Oh, wait. Hold on. I got it for... This is for you, Drugative. This is Death Rally. Bum-bum-bum. 
<laughs> Alright, cool. So let's go check uh, the projector. Can't remember which one it is. Um, hopefully some sweet, sweet aliens on board, too. Yeah, that'd be nice, huh? Um, and then, uh, says, whoop, whoop, ha, ha. <laughs> Urzatron says, but it is an appropriate, uh, band to have liquid water, so there's some really interesting computer models on how f life could have formed on other planets based on different masses and higher or lower gravity. Holy cow. Yeah, and we always think of life forms as something that's like humanoid looking and stuff like a lot of people do, but what was that um there was like a sci-fi movie um that dealt with that. We got to find Alice's film. I think that's what we got to do. No, we got the poster. There we go. Boom. But there was like um and I think that movie Arrival kind of has it too, where like you know, life form could be air, ba you know, like a like a fog based life form or water based life form. Um, all right, here we go. Activating the final, the the finale actually of Alan Wake. This is it. This is the last we're gonna get of this guy, man. I've really grown to like this character and. I'd like to see more of them. But as usual with final boss fights, they happen in cutscenes in Alan Wake, for the most part. Another member of the darkness defeated. Alan? Is it is it really you? It's really me. How? Where are my tissues? Now I'm all sad and shit. <laughs> two lovers held apart for far too long, enveloped in the light of a glorious dawn. <laughs> his his clothes didn't they stay clean, feel. for sure. He's home at last. Are these actual events, or merely a dream, a memory? or a glimpse of what is to come. One thing is certain. This scene takes place in another time and another place far, far away from Night Springs. <laughs> and if you're watching this on YouTube later on my YouTube channel, let me know what you think of this game and all the games we've played of Alan Wake and all the episodes and chapters and all that stuff. Let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Um, again, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're here with me on uh, stream uh, Twitch tonight, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. We spent like the last like 10 days or so going through the Alan Wake universe, or maybe it was like eight days or something, but I really appreciate y'all sticking with me and, and playing through this game. I know a lot of you were new to it. Some of you, you know, were, knew what it was and have played it before. So it was really cool to, to see, hear all your theories and, and all that stuff and talk it all out with you guys. It's been really fun doing that. Follow me on Twitter at Exploding Bullet. 
and follow me on Instagram at Seek and Destroy, S-I-I-K-E, D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, that means you're on my second YouTube channel, which is devoted to gaming. And if you look in the description box, of this video, you will see a link to Urzatron and Lil C and everyone that I talk to, Angel, everyone that's in my streams, I put all their links to their Twitch streams down in the description box below. So please go check out their channels and support them, follow them, watch what they do. Really great people that I've met on here. Uh, you included Drugative. Drugative is new to the channel tonight and uh, a, a happy addition. Very nice talking to you, my friend, and I hope you come back for more. I probably won't stream uh, tomorrow, which is Thursday or Friday. I probably won't stream either of those nights because Lil C and I are going to be playing Resident Evil 5 over the weekend on Saturday and Sunday probably, or one of those days or maybe both. So Lil C and I will work that out and we'll plan that. But next week, next Monday, I will come back with another stream, a solo stream of my own. I'll be playing um, probably either the new Devil May Cry remake or Resident Evil Revelations 2. I'll, I'll probably flip a coin. Or if you guys have a preference, let me know on social media which one you'd rather me play. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in tonight. It really means a lot to me. Also in the description box below is a link to my other YouTube channel where I'm coming up on my 100th episode of Seek and Destroy, which is my, my show where I review different things. We'll be doing some new toy reviews coming up leading up to the 100th episode. And we're going to have a really fun 100th episode where I'm going to do like a little you know video on my dog. We're going to do a Q&A with people. Um, we're going to do a lot of fun stuff. And maybe I'll make an idiot out of myself on the video as well. So thank you again tonight, everyone. Uh, Drugative says... I should be more energized. Uh, thanks for the stream. It was nice meeting you. I should be more energized for the next one. I'm back to work for three days and 11 days off, so I'll be around. Awesome. So for the next three days, I'm going to be you know, not streaming except for on the weekend with Lil C, and I'll post those videos up on my YouTube channel, um, and, uh, and we'll have them here that you can watch as well. But I'll come back next week, so by the time you're off next week, I'll be back with more streams. I will see you then. Thank you guys so much. As always, have a good night. I need to get some sleep. Have a good night. Bye-bye.